Gen Con 2019 just keeps rolling around with day two. And I have the pleasure of uh, meeting with Jay Gray from our Talsorian Games for the first time. Hello. Good to see you. And we're going to talk about uh, quite a few different products that you have, systems that are out there. And I know probably what's on everybody's mind is what's going on with Cyberpunk. Cyberpunk. Uh, we have the Cyberpunk Red Jumpstart Kit. If you're familiar with starter sets from other role-playing game lines like D&D, &D, mm -hmm. that's what this is. It is a core rulebook. Uh, it is a starter rulebook, a starter lore book. It is dice. Let me show you the dice. You're not going to get a good close-up of these. Oh, I'll shoot B-roll for you. Yeah, take a look at this, these, these beauties. Oh, my gosh. They're beautiful. Q Workshop did these for us. I was going to say, yeah, we, that, that looks yeah. like you went outside and had somebody uh, do something special yeah, for you. We didn't want just plain, boring old dice in our, in our things. Without, it comes with standees, cardboard standees. It comes with uh, uh, the little bases for the standees, because what's yeah. the use of? Right. It comes they with, won't stand without them. It comes with an easy reference sheet. It's like, sort of like a mini... Uh, you can call it a cheat sheet or you can call it a mini GM screen, whichever you prefer to use it for. Six pre-gens. And the nice thing about the pre-gens is it is not just, uh, here's your character, you play them. But they come with, if you uh, have went through Cyberpunk before, we have a life path system where you roll the bare bones of your background and then you write, you hang a story on top of that. We have a seven-step uh, seven simplified life path system in there. Okay. So that you can make your, you can have two people in the group wanting to play the rocker. Uh, the rocker boy, and they can be different backgrounds, right. and there's some stat variability as well, so they're not exactly so they the can same. can customize the pre-gens. They're not just, here yeah. you go. We're pretty excited about that. It, um, it retails for 30 uh, in the box. It's available from drive through for 15 yeah. PDF. And it, that came out yesterday. We're, we're thrilled to say that's selling well. Uh, it is a beautiful set. We worked really hard on it, and we're really excited about it. It's been selling like hotcakes here at Gen Con. We'll have it. What is the street date on that? We'll have it as the, it's when it's ready. Uh, basically, if there's any left over, there won't be. They'll, they'll go into the warehouse. After that, it's a new print run. Yeah, okay. Or I should say the first official print run. This sure. is the advanced print run. And so as soon as we can, we're hoping end of August, early September, but yeah, I don't want to promise. That's not bad. Yeah. That's fine. Yep. So that's, that's this. And that, by the way, is your copy. Oh, well, hey, To thanks. take back to your shop. Right, no problem. So we're going to talk a little bit about The Witcher. Yeah. For Witcher, we have the Lords and Lands expansion. It is this beautiful GM screen. This side's pretty. And I have to say, that is a, uh, a well-constructed screen. Yeah. Uh, we... That is not just cardboard here, folks. I think we spent more time shopping around for someone to make it, and to our specifications, and exactly the way we wanted it, than we actually did. And I said we didn't spend a lot of time designing it. We did. But we worked, we went through many, many, many contractors, so we found exactly who to make this, because we wanted this. We wanted this to do about 1d4 damage if you hit someone with it. Sure. Don't hit someone with it, kids. It also comes with an expansion booklet. It adds halflings as a playable race. Um, halflings in which are, are neat because they're magic resistant. It adds the noble profession, and the thing I like most about the noble profession is that at the high tier, no, uh, we, as you saw with the book, we break our classes into three groups each. They have three paths you can take, and each path has three tiers you can go up. At the highest tier of one of them, you get an estate. And as you rank up the estate, your estate gets additional rooms and benefits. And I love headquarter building. And then there's uh, rules for populating your setting with what we call every man NPCs like not anything special I have a scholar I have a I have a you know I need an apothecary there they are and then additional equipment uh, whips are in there which is nice to see because they that's a, something we get a request for a lot is uh, is long flexible melee weapons uh, and new, a few new alchemy uh, alchemical items and we're really excited about that and that's what we have new here. You have uh, an, like an adventure compendium coming, correct? We have two books coming. Okay. We have uh, 
Sorry, it's been... Uh, you had a best year. Thank you. I was trying to remember. Witcher's Journal. It's been two days. It's, we, it's been a, we know. It's, oh, yeah. yeah. We have the bestiary, uh, which is called Witcher's Journal. The nice thing is it's not just a bestiary. It is also going to be uh, little journal entries from a Witcher from the Golden Age of Witchers. Because in the setting, in the video games and in our game, uh, it is long past the prime of Witcher time. Lots of people don't think Witchers are necessary anymore. Monsters have been almost exterminated. And this is going to be a glimpse into what it was like way back in the early days when Witchers Good were old days. Yeah, back, back when monsters were eating people. Well, like good, when it was a good time to be a witcher. Uh, and that's coming out, we are hoping around quarter four, quarter one, but we're not going to promise. Uh, there's, uh, we're commissioning, all our art so far has been Gwent art from CDPR. We're commissioning new art because we're including monsters that have never been in video games before. Okay. Then we have the Adventure Compendium, A Book of Tales, and that's going to be a certain number of adventures. We're going back and forth on the total. And that's going to come out after uh, the, the bestiary. And that's going to just be a collection of adventures because adventures are good to have. People like pre-public. They, they like published adventures. It's nice. They tear them all apart. Well, you know what? You take it, use it as inspiration. You do whatever you want with them. And that is what we've got planned right now. Um, I do want to throw some love out for Castle Falkenstein. Now, now this has been out for, for years. It has been 1994. Yeah. Um, to give you an idea, uh, Cody Pondsmith, the designer of The Witcher, was born the same year this came out. Uh, it is a rules light story steampunk game that has elements of fantasy and fiction in that Jules Verne uh, his characters are there. Sherlock Holmes is there. And history, because you've got Otto von Bismarck trying to unite the Germanies. You've got Queen Victoria on the throne in England. Um, and it is played not with dice, but with playing cards, because gentlemen do not play with dice, or gentlewomen. And it is a beautiful game. I love it. it, is, it I'm running one game this weekend, and this is it. Uh, and there are six supplements available from us, and a shout out to our partners at Fat Goblin Games, because there are three additional supplements available more recently from them. Uh, new rules, a full adventure, and the bestiary for that, Curious Creatures, which is lovely because it's... It is. Curious Creatures is Dr. Doolittle's journal. Uh, see, that, see, that's one of the things that makes Castle Falkenstein stand out. Number one, it's not steampunk like everybody thinks steampunk. It's completely unique. Mm -hmm. And the way the game is actually kind of presented is that you're reading a story from somebody who is in that world. Right, except for the legalese and um, a little bit of editor's notes, mm -hmm. every piece of every book is written in character. Yes. The rules and everything. The idea is Tom Olam is a guy from our world. He ended up in the world of Castle Falkenstein. And because he's a gamer, eventually he wrote a game. And he sent it back here. And it is... It's a fun. It's fun to read. Yes, and that's what I love about it. Even if you, we've had people come up and you say, "I just love reading it as a novel," um, and there's not many games that do the full in character. I think us and the Dresden Files RPG did it too. Yeah, and I, I don't seem to recall the Dresden Files being like everything was in character. It was a lot of a lot of sidebars and things like that. Yeah, and uh, other than that, and sometimes. Sometimes you just you want to read a rule book and enjoy the reading, yes. and that's, that's great. As opposed to it being a chore. Yeah, and if you're ever doing a Victorian game, even if it's not ours, uh, the Comme Fa mm -hmm. supplement, uh, which is this. I keep going off the camera, I'm sorry. No, that's this right. beautiful blue book here is it's life in the steam age uh the guide to everything right and proper yes. we have people coming who play uh any number of other steampunk games and they get just this so that's the resource for you know how do i present my business card or how which side of the street should, which side of me should my mistress walk on as opposed to my wife right uh little things how do i throw a dinner See, party I just have my mistress on one side and my wife on the other and it works well there are specific sides you're supposed to have each on it so that when someone greets you they don't greet your mistress 
as your wife. Right. Uh, and there's, there's all these lovely rules about the season and what it's like to be on a train at the time. You know, because people think of the Orient Express, but the Orient Express wasn't until the late 1890s. Right. And the trains before then weren't were not fun. not comfortable. No. So very is, dirty. Yeah. So this is if you get any Falcon Scene book and you don't want to play Falcon Scene, this is the book to get. And I love that. You can have this one too. I have that. You have that? Good. Yes. Yeah, I already. I've already got it. Well, thank you, sir. But uh, basically, it's Cyberpunk Red and Witcher. And once we have more bandwidth to explore, we'll be getting into Falcon Scene again. We'll be getting into Mechton again. We're not. They're not deadlines. They're just sleeping for the time being. Yeah, right. I was going to say I have seen more coverage of Falkenstein in the past year than I probably saw in the three, four years prior to that. Now, so, I mean, it is a is a living, breathing game line. Just because they haven't released some new stuff for it doesn't mean it's dead. Well, it's just an interesting thing. I love steampunk, but I think there's been so many variations that some people want to go back to a. I'm not going to say simpler, but a more high adventure fantasy romance style. Right. As opposed, gritty. Has a little less gritty, a little less dark. Uh, you know, they want something light and, and, and lovely. And it's not that it can't be dark, but it, this is this is Legend of, Z of, of Zenda. This is this is swinging off chandeliers like Errol Flynn, and and sometimes it's not quite the same uh, in other games. Play other games too. My, our, our, other other publishers are awesome. Right. But please play House of Falcon Scene too. Excellent. Any final words, Jay? You'd like to share with the audience? I want to thank everybody who came to Gen Con this year because the response has been amazing. We have had lines both mornings and the love we've gotten from everyone and the excitement that Cyberpunk is back out there. It's, it's really heartwarming and touching. And I'm just so thankful. So thank you. Thank you, everybody, for, for the love and the we're all humbled. Thank you. And Jay, thank you for taking time out because you guys are busy. Probably seeing people kind of like in and out of the frame all the time because yep. that's how busy the booth is. Yes. Yes, it Excellent. is. If you're ready for some more fun and you'd like to check out the latest episode of The Daily Dope, my live Monday through Friday show that airs at 7 p.m. Central right here on YouTube, click right here. And if you'd like to roll the dice and push your luck and see a randomly selected video from the channel, click right here. You pays your money, you takes your chances. Once again, I'm Jeff McAleer and thank you for watching.